So the next piece of the .git folder we'll cover is the refs folder. So in every git repo that you make, uh, there's going to be a refs folder. And inside of that refs folder, uh, there are a couple of different subdirectories. And we'll start by talking about the heads directory. But actually before that, refs for references is where git stores all of the, every time I've talked about a pointer or a reference, whether it's a branch pointer or uh, a tag, two different ways or two things in Git that refer to commits, those are stored, they actually exist, in the refs folder. So that's what refs is, references. Um, so we'll start by taking a look at branches. In this refs slash heads directory, Git makes one file for every branch in a repo. And that file will have the name of the branch. So when I've shown diagrams like this in the past, where I've shown uh, or I've illustrated branch references with an arrow, like a label and an arrow. These references are just files in that folder, in the refs slash heads folder. So uh, if we had a branch called dark mode, there is a file called dark mode and there's no arrow, but inside the file, there's a commit hash that points to a particular commit. So in this repo, this is the react repo. Let's see, we've got three branches here. And if I just show you inside of this .git folder, I'll just show the contents, .git slash, and then we've got refs right here. So I'll just print out the contents. We have heads, remotes, and tags. Now you may not have all of these, depending on if you have any remotes and if you have any tags. Um, also, I forgot to mention that if you started with a brand new empty git repo, things are slightly different than if you actually have a commit in there, if you have you know stuff being staged, uh, if you have history. So everything I'm talking about is once you have at least one commit and at least one branch. Okay, so uh, inside of this heads directory, I'll print that out just like this. You'll see we have three files, one for each branch. And each one of those files contains a commit hash. Uh, so why don't I start with a git log? Actually, let me just open up the contents here. Okay, so I have it in VS Code, my .git folder for this one repo. If I look at refs, heads, here's the three files. Let's take a look at new branch. I think that's the branch we're currently on. And it just has a commit hash in here, 796 is what it starts with. If I do git log one line, we can see this is where uh, new branch is this commit 796, but we have some other branches, I think, actually, maybe not. We've got these remote branch, uh, but all the other branches here, master, new branch. Okay, well, why don't I make a new commit instead? As you can see, master and new branch refer to the same commit. Ah, this one doesn't, branch from tag. I made that a while ago in a previous video. It refers to a different commit. Just like this slide where we have one branch pointing or referencing one commit and a different reference over here to a different commit. Uh, so if I make a commit on this new branch, do I have any changes here? Nah, of course not. Let's just make a file. Touch um, new file .js. Let's add new file. Let's commit it. Add new file. Okay, so now if I do a one line, git log, this new branch is referencing this commit, 5FB, and we see that here. It says 5FB. Master, though, has not changed. It's exactly what happened here on this slide, where, if I go back a bit, at one point, we had two branches pointing to the same commit, and then they diverged, right? In this dark mode reference file, it's now pointing to a new commit. And when I say pointing, it's just a commit hash stored in a file. So if I make one more branch, if I branch off from where I am now, git switch dash C for create, um, what should we call this one? Just chicken. What do we see? We have a new file in that refs slash heads folder called chicken. And inside of it, it has the tip commit, the tip of that branch, which chicken, we just created it from new branch. So it has the same commit hash right now. We're pointing to the same commit, 5FB. 5FB. All right, so inside of this directory, we also have uh, a tags folder, and tags are just pointers as well. So you see some of the tags that I created. Each one has a commit hash, uh, and then the name of that file is the name of that tag. 
So just another reference, hence the refs directory. And then this remotes folder, you can see for each of the remotes I have set up, there's a directory. And I'll just show you what we're looking at right now. Uh, if we pay attention to origin here, if I do a fetch, so this is a, a React repository. If I do a git fetch, just everything. It fetched from the origin by default, which is uh, the React repo, the not my fork, but the official React repo. If we take a look in here, now it's been updated uh, because we have this new, remember we talked about remote tracking branches. It's keeping track of the commit that uh, origin master. So the master branch on origin, this is where that tip of that branch is. I don't have that. That is not actually on my local working directory. I know about it or my Git repository knows about it. It has that commit here. And this is how it's able to do things like when I type git status, uh, oh, if I go back to master rather, and I type git status again, it tells me you have diverged. But long story short, this is the same concept, right? A, a reference to a branch, but instead of a local branch that we have, uh, this is something that's updated when we fetched or when we pull. These are references to branches that are on a remote. So that might be the origin remote, the master branch, uh, or the cult remote, the master branch, but there could be many, many other branches on there. Uh, I just don't have them currently. All right, so that's a quick exploration of the refs directory. Um, it's just a, a place that gets stores all those references. Every time I've diagrammed something like this, where I have a branch pointer referencing a commit, it's just a file with the name of a branch. And in that file, there's just a single commit hash. And then there's a bunch of them, one for each branch, and they're stored in the heads directory, where it's also a tags directory and a remotes directory. Okay, 